بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه واتبع هداه أما بعض My dearest brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of The Light of Islam. Uh, I welcome each one of you in this very episode. We begin by thanking Allah Azza wa Jal for giving us the opportunity to be able to watch this very important program and benefit bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Today we are speaking about a very, very important topic, a relevant, timely topic, and that is honesty in business. Brothers and sisters, honesty is an attribute, a quality that belongs to the believing men and women. From the attributes of the faithful is that they are honest in their speech, in their action, in their transactions, in their dealings and in their covenants. And most importantly, a believing man or a believing woman is honest and trustworthy and truthful in every aspect of their life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqin. Allah azza wa jal addressing the faithful, he says, wa kunu ma'as sadiqin. Be mindful of Allah, be careful of your obligation uh, towards Allah azza wa jal and be amongst the truthful ones, those who speak the truth when they uh, sign a covenant, they adhere to the rules and regulations connected to that covenant. And when they are given a trust, they don't break that trust. They don't deceive others. They don't defraud. They don't betray, but they maintain honesty in every aspect of their life. One particular area that we need to really focus on and give great emphasis to is honesty in business. Brothers and sisters, uh, the reason we want to have this discussion is to really understand the positive impacts of being honest as a Muslim man or woman. If I'm honest, I have a business, but I maintain honesty. We want to speak about the positive impact that it will have on a person, on their family, uh, on the community, uh, and most importantly, the ummah as a whole. And on the contrary, if a person doesn't maintain honesty, they're dishonest they deceive, they betray uh, others, they lie, they defraud. The negative it may, impact it may have on a person, their family, the community, uh, and as a ummah, as a whole. So brothers and sisters, the concept of honesty in business is something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, he encouraged, he emphasized, and he was the practical demonstration of what honesty means when it comes to business. And let us not forget the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam, he himself was a businessman. So his code of conduct, his honesty, his transparency, his truthfulness was uh, outstanding. He was a man of excellence. So anyone who is doing business, anyone who wants to embark on this journey of trade and commerce and commercial dealings, uh, buying, selling, then they have to follow the model that has been set out by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says uh, in one of his profound narrations, al muslimuna ala shurutihim, the believers are upon their conditions. What does this hadith mean? Ay thabituna, they are firm upon their conditions, that they don't break their covenants. Uh, they adhere to the rules and regulations that have been set out by the two sacred sources, the Quran and the Sunnah. Uh, they adhere to the rules and regulations, uh, the codified uh, rules and regulations that have been set out by the Sharia. And they don't break the promises, whether it's uh, a transaction with an individual, whether it's a transaction with a company, whether it's your dealing with any person, you maintain uh, utmost honesty. And this is the quality of a believing man and woman. So when we speak about honesty in business, Brothers and sisters, let us not forget business transaction, buying, selling, 
the, the, the movement of goods, the movement of cash, tabdilul mal bil mal, tabdilul yad bil yad, the movement of goods uh, and the exchange of goods is not a new phenomenon. It has been around for a very long time. Uh, since uh, the, the beginning of civilization, people were known uh, for trade. But Islam came and introduced a codified, comprehensive system. Uh, if you look at the life of the Prophet ﷺ during the Makkan period, then it will become very apparent how uh, the people didn't maintain any rules and regulations. They uh, violated all of the rules and regulations. There was an honesty. Rather, the people were dishonest. People were giving uh, in, in transaction less that they were supposed to give. So Islam came to protect uh, the welfare, the right of the ba'ir and the mushtari, the tajir, the one who is selling, the vendor, the buyer, the seller. Islam came to protect the rights, the welfare uh, of the, the, the buyer and the seller. And Islam introduced a comprehensive system when it came to business trade and commerce and it laid down some rules and regulations to protect the buyer and the seller and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam demonstrated that when he was in mecca and before he got married to our mother khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was on business on behalf of khadija radiyallahu anha and she saw amazing qualities she saw honesty she saw transparency and this man demonstrated quality of excellence and she was uh, amazed and she was uh, attracted uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of this amazing quality and character and eventually the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam marries Khadija radiallahu anha but before the marriage the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was uh, doing business on behalf of Khadija radiallahu anha so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he maintained honesty, transparency, never ever did he defraud anyone, never ever did he cheat anyone, never ever did he break any of his promises. So take a moment and think as a Muslim man, Muslim woman, any of us who are involved in any type of business, provided it's halal, are we maintaining 100% honesty? Are we selling a product that is free from defect? Are we selling a product that exactly what it says on uh, the product, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the quality of the product, are we maintaining honesty? That's a question that we need to ask ourselves. Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his book, Ihya, he says something very important. He says, anyone who wants to embark on uh, a business, anyone who wants to start up a new business, anyone who is thinking about tijara uh, business, then there are some important preconditions. There are some important preconditions that they have to maintain. And if they don't, the consequences are severe. It could be the case that this person's earning is haram because they did not understand the prerequisites, the preconditions of business. What are the preconditions of starting up a business? A person needs to understand what is halal and haram. The product I'm selling, is it permissible? Is it allowed? That's a question that I need to ask myself. Number two is, I have to be honest uh, and I have to be transparent. I can't hide any defects or any faults of the product that I'm selling. All of this I have to be aware of. I have to be well equipped with all of this knowledge and not just start up a business and then not care about where my earnings are coming from. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says in a hadith, لا يأتينا على الناس زمان لا يبال المرء بما أخذ المال أمن حلال أم من حرام The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says لا يأتينا على الناس زمان A time will come لا يبال المرء بما أخذ المال A man will not worry He will not care where his wealth is coming from أمن حلال أم من حرام Is it coming from a source that is halal or is it coming from a source that is Haram. Take a moment and think about this hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says a time will come where people will become ghafil, people will become unaware. They don't care about their source of income. Is it halal or is it haram? Take a moment and think. The money that you are bringing into your house, my dear brother, my dear sister, you are feeding your child with that. Uh, you want to be very careful. We have to be extra care careful. 
that we are not feeding our children, we are not feeding the members within our house with that which is impermissible, that which is prohibited. The Prophet says in another narration, Everybody that has consumed that which is haram and this body has developed based on haram, then Jahannam is better for that person. We have to be very, very careful when it comes to halal and haram, especially our income, especially when it comes to selling, buying. We have to be very honest. Or if I deceive somebody and I take money from them, I have violated their haq, I have taken their right, and I am in debt to that person. Allah Azza wa Jalla, he says in Surah Baqarah, verse number 168, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ كُلُوا مِمَّا فِي الْأَرْضِ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا Allah Azza wa Jal, He addresses humanity, not just the believers, every single creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. He says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ كُلُوا مِمَّا فِي الْأَرْضِ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا Consume that which is halal and that which is pure. So our income needs to be halal, our income needs to be pure. If I'm selling a product, if I have a business and I'm selling products, I have to be very honest. I can't cheat anybody. I can't betray anybody. I can't defraud any person and take their haq because on the day of hisab, that person will bring a case forward. They will present a case to Allah Azza wa Jal and they will say, Ya Allah, this person took my haq. They took my right. And it could be five pounds, it could be 10 pounds, it could be a thousand pound or even more. Whatever the amount is, if you take somebody else's haq on the day of hisab, you are not taking a step forward. You will not be able to enter Jannah until you have repaid that person back. And the Prophet ﷺ warns us that this is the consequence of the person who is betraying others, who is not honest and who is defrauding uh, other people. Brothers and sisters, if we are honest, when it comes to our dealings, when it comes to uh, selling the products. If we are honest and we maintain uh, trustworthiness, there will be barakah in that. The Prophet ﷺ, says, The Prophet ﷺ says, when two people are in business, they are buying and they are selling, they are about to uh, go ahead with a transaction, in sadaqa, if the person is honest, wa bayyana, and they are very clear about the product that they are selling, they don't hide anything. They are very honest about the product they're selling. They don't hide anything. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, "Burika lahuma fi bayyihima." Allah azza wa jal will give them lots of barakah. If you are selling your mobile phone, for example, and there is a defect within this mobile phone. It's not visible, it's an internal problem. And you don't disclose that information. You hide that fault and you sell this mobile phone. You have deceived somebody. You have taken their haq. Now, you may think you're happy because you've made extra 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 100 pounds. But the money that you have taken, this is not your money. This is somebody else's haq, number one. Number two, you will repay, have to repay that person back on the day of Hisab. Number three, you're feeding your children. You're consuming that money yourself, that which is haram. So we want to be very careful. Talabul halali wajibun ala kulli muslimin. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, this hadith that we find in the Tabrani, that seeking lawful income is an obligation upon each person. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he says, that if a person, he is honest and he doesn't hide anything, بُورِكَ لَهُمَا فِي بَيْعِهِمَا Allah Azza wa Jal will give them lots of barakah. وَإِن كَذَبَا وَكَثَمَا And while they are in business, they are selling a product. وَإِن كَذَبَا وَكَثَمَا If they lie and وَإِن كَثَمَا They hide a defect. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مُحِقَ بَرَكَتُ Allah Azza wa Jal will remove all of the barakah fi bay'ihima in this transaction, in this product, in this uh, transaction between two people. So we want to be very careful that we don't deceive others. If we are honest, and if you are honest about this transaction, remember 
Allah Azza wa Jal will give you lots of barakah. And you may take a loss. You may take a loss because you was honest. If you were selling your mobile phone and it has a defect and you was honest about that, instead of selling it for 500 pounds, you sold it for 200 pounds. At least you was honest. There will be barakah, hidden barakah, apparent barakah. Allah will be happy with you. And the money that you are bringing to your family is halal. And most importantly, you will feel satisfaction in your heart. You will feel itminan uh, in your heart. You will find satisfaction in your heart. And if you take someone else's money by lying, by cheating, remember the Prophet ﷺ, he says, man ghasha, man ghasha minna. The one who cheats, he is not amongst us. What does laysa minna mean? Laysa ala tariqatina. That person is not on our path. The one who cheats. That wasn't the quality of our beloved Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That wasn't the quality of the generation after him and the generation after him. They were people of honesty and they maintained honesty in every aspect of their lives. So brothers and sisters, if we are selling a product, if we are in business, and if this product has a fault, it is absolutely important that we mention the fault. Okay, And an example could be, a person selling their car and if they're selling their car that I say they're selling it on Facebook market or Gumtree or they're selling it on any other platform whether it's eBay or any other platforms where people trade if you're selling any product especially a car then you have to in the description you have to mention uh, everything about that car the good and the bad and if you don't disclose the information regarding this car then you will deceive another person if you're selling your car because you want to upgrade you need a bigger car fine that's not a problem but be honest when you're selling this car if the car has mileage of 120,000 and you uh, lower the mileage and there are many people who do these kind of things and if you uh, lower the mileage and then you sell it on a car that had 150,000 on the clock and then all of a sudden it's 50,000 you lower the mileage so it becomes more attractive and people buy it for a higher price, you are cheating somebody. You are taking someone's right away. So we have to be very careful. If there's anything about this car, if it's been involved in an accident, if there is something wrong with this car, I have to disclose that information. If I don't, I will be liable to Allah Azza wa Jal because I have broken a covenant. I have lied. I have broken a trust. And that cannot be the quality of a believing man or woman. Look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says in this very, very powerful hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, ثَلَاثَةٌ لَا يُكَلِّمُهُمُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَلَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَا يُزَكِّيهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says there are three groups of people. On the day of Hisab, Allah Azza wa Jal will not speak to them. نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكْ وَلَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْهِمْ Allah will not even look at them. وَلَا يُزَكِّيهِمْ Allah will not purify them. وَلَا هُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Severe punishment awaits those three groups of people. It's important we know who they are, that Allah will not speak with them. Allah will not look at them. Allah will not purify them. And for them awaits severe punishment. The Prophet ﷺ, then he says, المنانو. The mannan is the one who gives you a gift and then he reminds you of that gift. I gave you a thawb, I gave you a watch, I gave you this, I gave you that, I gave you some money, I lent you some money. When that person keeps reminding you, that person is known as mannan. We don't want to be a person who gives gifts and we're constantly reminding people. That is between me and Allah. I did it for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Number two, al-musbilu izarahu, a person who walks around with their trousers below their ankle. And the point that we wanted to mention, Mahallu Istishhad, the point of reference that we want to mention is Al Munafiku Silatahu Bil Halifil Kadibi. The Prophet he says, the person who is excessive in taking oath, Al Munafiku Silatahu Bil Halifil Kadibi, the person who is constantly saying, Wallahi, this car is brand new. Wallahi, this is the true mileage of the car. Wallahi, this car has never been in an accident. And I promise you, this is the uh, mileage, the true mileage, and this is the number of owners. But in reality, this is a lie. 
So we want to be very careful we don't do any of those things. We're not amongst those people who constantly say, Wallahi, Billahi, Tallahi, this is the true reality of the car. But the truth is otherwise, that this is not the case with the car. So we don't want to deceive anyone. The Prophet ﷺ says, Allah will not even look at them. Allah will not even speak to them. And for them awaits a severe punishment. What does that mean? That person is going to enter Jahannam. My dearest brothers and sisters, the Prophet Shu'aib addressing his people. And this is uh, Nabiullah Shu'aib who came to the people of Madian. وَإِلَىٰ مَدْيَنَ أَخَاهُمْ شُعَيْبًا Allah Azza wa Jalla, he mentions in Surah uh, Hud, verse number 84. وَإِلَىٰ مَدْيَنَ أَخَاهُمْ شُعَيْبًا And to the people of Madian, their brother Shu'aib came. What did he say? يَا قَوْمِ My people, أُعْبُدُ الله. Worship Allah Azza wa Jal. مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ There is none worthy of worship except Allah. You have nobody else except Allah to worship. وَلَا تَنْقُصُ الْمِكْيَالَ وَالْمِيزَانِ And do not deprive people, do not do injustice to people in measurement. Whatever is due, you give them that which is due. And Allah Azza wa Jalla, he mentions the scenario of the people of Mecca, how when they were buying and they were selling, they were cheating one another. وَيْلُلْ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا اكْتَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْفُونَ وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ when the people they were selling and buying, they would give less. And this was the quality of the people who didn't understand the rules and regulations of trade. Islam gave them a gift. Islam gave them a comprehensive system. Islam gave them a codified system when it comes to uh, business. Islam gave them a proper system when it comes to commercial dealings, buying, selling, trade and commerce. But we have to adhere to that. We have to maintain that in order for us to attain barakah. Shu'aib alayhi salam addressing his people, he says, وَلَا تَنْقُصُ الْمِكْيَالَ وَالْمِيزَانِ And in the next verse, Shu'aib alayhi salam, he says, يَا قَوْمِ أَوْفُ الْمِكْيَالَ وَالْمِيزَانِ Be just when it comes to measurement. If you owe somebody something, you give that to them. And if you're selling something, be honest, be transparent, don't hide any faults. And then he says, وَأَوْفُ الْمِكْيَالَ وَالْمِيزَانَ بِالْقِسْطِ Maintain honesty. And then he says, وَلَا تَبْخَسُ النَّاسَ أَشْيَاءَهُمْ And do not defraud people of their property. Don't take someone else's wealth. Don't take someone else's right. Don't take someone else's prof uh, property, their wealth. That which belongs to them, that is not yours. You have to be very careful or you will stand before Allah Azza wa Jal. And on the day of Hisab, you will repay them back with your good deeds. And if you don't have any good deeds, then their bad deeds will be given to you. نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Brothers and sisters, may Allah Azza wa Jalla give us the tawfiq to understand the importance of honesty, transparency, truthfulness in commercial dealings when it comes to business, buying and selling goods. Islam is a comprehensive religion. It teaches us every aspect of life. It codified this proper system and gave it to us as a gift so that we can maintain prosperity, security, balance, equality, amongst the people. This is a gift from Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah give us the tawfiq to be like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in our dealings, in our transactions. Until our next program, my dear brothers and sisters, may Allah keep you well, may Allah bless you, and may Allah Azza wa Jal give all of us the tawfiq to be amongst the sadiqeen, the people who speak the truth, and they act upon the truth, and they don't break their promise. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته